first, um, I'd like to present from on the other side of the pond a very unique individual who has uh, been working tirelessly in his country to preserve those freedoms that uh, we all enjoy dearly. And he is uh, the individual that, in a very real sense, started the global debate on free speech as it relates to our member of parliament from the Netherlands, Mr. Geert Wilders. Um, Mr. Malcolm, Lord Malcolm Pearson from the UK was that individual just a couple of months ago that invited mm -hmm. member of parliament of the Netherlands, Mr. Geert Wilders, to come to parliament, come to the House of Lords, show his very controversial film, Fitna, and speak and have a debate in the mother of all parliaments in the UK. Well, you'll hear from Lord Pearson that uh, things are changing overseas. And one of the reasons why we had this week just now, free speech week, is to uh, not allow in the United States what is occurring in England and other countries in the European Union. So please welcome uh, Sir Lord Malcolm Pearson from the United States. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I think Tom has been um, very generous in that introduction. What, um, what I did in this saga, and of course Geert was very well known before I came into the picture, was that I heard that that um, somewhat unsatisfactory body, the European Parliament in Brussels, had banned Mr. Wilders, Geert Wilders, from showing his film Fitna. Um, in, in, in the European Parliament. And so I thought it would be a good idea to invite him to the Mother of Parliaments, to the, to the House of Lords, to show his film there, to show it to members of Parliament and members of the House of Lords, and then to go on and have a press conference and um, show the film again and, and, and take questions. And of course the, the driving force for this initiative was freedom of speech. And um, I can give you many examples later of why um, we are getting very worried in the United Kingdom at the advance of Islas Islamism, at the appeasement from our political and bureaucratic classes um, in every area of our public life um, uh, um, in the face of this Islamist um, advance. The, um, the Muslim community in the United Kingdom um, obviously weren't all that happy about um, Geert Wilders coming and showing his film, and they made some very serious threats to our security uh, people, who passed them on to me and my colleague in this venture, Baroness Cox. They said that the Muslim community was going to put 10,000 Muslims on the streets. They were going to invade, infiltrate and invade the Houses of Parliament and disrupt the proceedings in both the House of Commons and um, the House of Lords, and just for good measure, they were going to have me arrested um, under existing um, um, legislation against re religious hatred. And then we had a stroke of luck, because our Home Secretary, who is a rather second-rate little woman, I'm afraid, yes. she, um, she decided to ban Gert Wilders from, um, from, from coming to the United Kingdom at all. Um, she is a second-rate little. I can tell you afterwards a couple of stories if we take questions um, about her recently, which will confirm what I've said. So this really raised the event from being something which would have been controversial, but not out of the ordinary. But here we had the British Home Secretary banning another European citizen, um, and in, in the European Union there is supposed to be freedom of movement. Um, of people, unless there is an urgent, pressing, and immediate danger to national security. So she said that um, a Dutch member of parliament coming to show this film in the House of Lords uh, and to the press constitute an urgent, pressing, and a real threat to national uh, security, which was, of course, nonsense. But it, it, did, it did create um, a, a media event. It created media interest of a, of a very high level. Uh, because, of course, Gert, being Gert, said, well, I'm coming anyway, and we'll see if they do dare to turn me back at the border. 
And until the very last minute, this is on the 12th of February, we didn't know whether he would be turned back or not because the Dutch government um, actually behaved quite well. Uh, they sent their ambassador, the Dutch ambassador in London, was sent to the airport to um, receive Geert on his arrival. And right up to the last minute, we thought the British government might um, crack. And you ladies and gentlemen are luckier <laughs> than we were because Geert Wilders is here today in the United States of America, can take your questions, can answer them, and can raise the whole tempo and profile of this debate about the Islamist, uh, the Islamist attack on our Western culture and our Western civilization, which I see as quite simply the greatest problem in the world today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Geert Wilders. Thank you, my friend Malcolm. You are a very brave uh, man indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I am here um, in America this week as part of the Free Speech Summit being held in Florida under the sponsorship of the Florida um, Security Council. And it's clear to me and to all of us that a serious discussion of the threats of our freedoms, the freedoms in the West, cannot come too soon. For example, the freedom of expression, amongst others, is under heavy attack. Representative Adam Hesner, the majority leader of the Florida House of Representatives, was attacked in a press release issued by the National Office of the Council of American Islamic Relations. Say this, Kerr was an unindicted co-conspirator in the Holy Land Foundation trial. They are a funder and a supporter of terrorism and support uh, terrorist groups like Hamas. And I would denounce any Florida government official that supported an organization like Kerr. Thank you. The majority leader of the Florida House of Representatives was attacked in a press release issued by the National Office of the Council of American Islamic Relations, CARE, on Monday for daring to appear in a private event with me the past weekend. Because of that appearance alone, CARE is demanding that Representative Hesner steps down or be removed from his position. And this attack on a friend and on a fellow legislator is a grave concern to me. Kerr's assault on Representative Hesner strikes at the very heart of our most basic freedoms. In fact, it is but the latest episode in that organization's long-running and determined effort to silence its critics. Indeed, Kerr seeks to suppress all those who dare to challenge the theo-political legal program that authoritative Islam calls Sharia. And in doing so, they are seeking to impose what amount to Sharia blasphemy codes. And it is especially important to note that Representative Hesner, Adam Hesner, is not only being attacked for comments that he made, that were made, and that are deemed offensive by those who seek to impose the Sharia in your beautiful country, America. No, his career is now being threatened for comments made by others in his presence, in this case, by me. I made those comments. Thus, the Islamists are infringing not only on this country's constitutional protected freedom of speech and expression, but also on the freedom of association. And if a high-ranking, a high-ranking public official elected by the people and appointed to his leadership position by his peers, if such a person cannot speak honestly and openly about his concerns and do so in places and in the company of his own choosing without fear of suppression or other retribution, who among us, ladies and gentlemen, who among us is safe? 